Facebook family, I pray that you're well. Again, this is Pastor Hagwood, First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting Christ to restore, renew, and rebuild people to serve the kingdom of God. Uh, Y'all just bear with me because I'm getting my stand kind of set up to make sure I get it at level. There we go. I think that's better. Um, so we're going through our Sunday school lesson on today. And uh, you probably saw the subscript. The, 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 uh, the title is incorrect, and I got to go back and change it. But it's one in Jesus Christ. And I'll, I'll go back and through that. Um, and, and correct that on Facebook. But uh, we're coming from Ephesians chapter 2, 11 through 22. That is correct. The scripture is correct on your subtitle. So um, we'll go ahead and get started on today. Again, this is December 11th, 2022. And again, I pray everyone is well on today. Uh, I'm in the conference room. Um, got uh, uh, one brother here and uh, others that will be coming um, here for our Sunday school. So let's have a word of prayer before we get started on today. Let us pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for uh, this day. Thank you for all that you are doing and continue to do, Lord, in our lives. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you meet us in this place to be, O oh Lord, one with you in order to be able, Lord, to go through your word uh, accurately and acutely, Lord. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you bless us now and allow this word, Lord, to get inside of our spirit, inside our hearts, inside our minds, mm -hmm. in order to be exercised out by it. We thank you, Lord, for all that you continue to do. Bless us all, those who are here uh Literally, oh God, uh, and um, in person and those who are online, oh God, bless everyone that is watching in regards to this lesson. We thank you, Lord, in faith, continue to work through us, and we'll be careful to be, give your name, praise, honor, and glory. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. So with that, let me go into the aim for change. I know we started a little bit late, but I'm going to go ahead and get this thing going. So it, it says that by the end of the lesson, we will understand Paul's explanation of Jews and Gentiles becoming one in Christ express pain and sorrow over the divisions within Christ church and joy when divisions are broken down and become acquainted with church, unifying and church dividing issues in order to devise strategies for addressing them. And the end focus reads this way. It says Marcus and Felicia held such high hopes when they, uh, when they married, but they could never have known that blending two families would be so difficult. Felicia's children from a previous relationship were crazy about Marcus, but they seemed <clears throat> to resent the things he did for his children during their weekend visit. Felicia felt that Marcus probably was doing too much for them, trying to make up for not being with them all the time. Last weekend was the worst. Marcus and Felicia had to referee what was about to become World War III. <laughs> Their two daughters were arguing about what to watch on, on the big screen television. Felicia's daughter, Katrina, screamed at Marcus's daughter, Akira, I don't care what you want. You're not really a part of this family anyway. Your daddy lives with me. Marcus and Felicia had to explain to their children that even though Marcus's children weren't there all the time, they were both an equally important part of their family. Christians often have similar problems with diverse members coming together as one. What are some of the divisions in the Christian church today? In today's lesson, Paul tackles the problem of division between Jews and Gentiles in the Ephesian congregation. And this is the thing about the church. And, and, and we hear this often is that church Sunday is the most segregated day yeah. of the week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, because you have folks from <clears throat> different denominations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interdenominational, interdenominational churches. You have. Um, you know, Baptists are worshiping, the yeah. Presbyterians are worshiping, yeah. the 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 the, um, the, um, the Anglicans and it's Episcopalians, they're worshiping. Yeah. The Methodists are worshiping. The AME Zion, the AMEs, they they're worshiping. Yeah. But but uh, then you have then the dichotomy of race. Yeah. So now you have Chinese Baptists over here, and yeah. and, and, and uh, uh, the Asian Holiness, the Vietnamese Holiness over here, and then the yeah. Black Baptists over here. And, yeah. And 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 then the and then the white Methodists over here. Yeah. So it's always this dichotomy that a lot of times we create for ourselves, and a lot of times it's tied to traditions and and, and the things that we have certain uh, interests and proclivities to. Right, but right. the reality is, is that all of us, when we how we have all of this in our different places, we're still are supposed to be worshiping the same Jesus. Supposed to be exactly <laughs> supposed to be worshiping the same Jesus, yeah. and this is where. 
I think Paul, when we look at Ephesians, yeah. he's dealing with this dichotomy, the yeah. separation, if you will, yeah. between Jews and Gentiles. Right, and what right. you're finding, and this is in the Ephesian church. Right, right. So you have Jews in that church in right. Ephesus, right. Gentiles that are in that church in Ephesus, right. and those two entities are fighting one another. Right. Now, what does this cause? Not only does it cause division yeah. and divisiveness, but yeah. it begins a process of separating us from the true love of God. Right, right. And when that happens, yeah. it's very difficult for the church to be about church business, yeah. ministry, right. service, right. worship, fellowship, uh -huh. discipleship, what we're doing right now. Right. These are the things where we places where we grow. Yeah. But if I was to put some type of dichotomy up and say, well, um, Brother Dean, because of what you have on or because of what someone else has on, you don't need to be in this space. Yeah, yeah. So now that there becomes this, this thing that has nothing to do with God, right. but now it becomes something because just creating separation for no reason, no reason and gets yeah. our gets our minds and our hearts distracted yeah. away from the main cause. Right. right. Away from the main reason. Right. Away from the main instance of why we come together in the first place. Right. right. And so with this, this is where when we come to God's house, we have to come, in, in, in a sense, come together. Yeah, yeah. We have to come together in a sense where our minds and our hearts are tied to one Christ. Right, right. Doesn't matter where you came from. Don't matter yeah. if you came across town, if you were yeah. right down the street. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're all coming here for the same purpose. Yeah. And so with that, we must embody the embodiment of Christ. Yeah. Especially as the pastor. As the pastor, as leaders. We have to embody that because you never know who's coming to your church. Yeah, yeah. You don't know the diversity of who's coming to your church, and you must be able to welcome each and every person in your church, in the church. Right, right. In the church as a creation of God that God made in his own image. Yeah. Whether they're saved or not. Yeah, yeah. That's not that's not up to you. That's not up to me. Yeah. Whether they're saved or not. They're coming to the house for a reason. Yeah. yeah. So you're right. praying that they're yeah. coming to God's house. And the reason why they're coming here is because they sense a calling of God to yeah. come into his house and to make one with, one with Christ right. for whatever reason. Right. The Holy Spirit, you never know what the Holy Spirit is doing in yeah. moving someone into the space. All right. So this is why it's so important that we get past these distractions. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I think that's why this is so important as we can, you know, live our lives. Yeah. Because if we don't get that, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to create separation amongst ourselves. And this is how you get the clickish activity. Yeah. In churches, why you right. get a group over here and a group over here and a group yeah. over here? Yeah. You're like this group fighting that group, these two groups fighting that one group, this yeah. one group fighting both groups and another group yeah. that's getting formed. You know, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I think, uh, I think, brother Dean, when you start really thinking about it, yeah, this is where Paul saw and he saw a really definitive issue within the church. Yeah. yeah. That could just as well crush the church. Right. If yeah. we allow it. Yeah. Yeah. And so so if, if ministry, ministering Jesus Christ is not the main focus in the various ways we do it. Yeah. If we, we're putting up all this other these other things, yeah. then we, we it, all all those distractions become not uh, become but become nullifications, if you will, yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We start to nullify Christ. Yeah. Yeah. We start to separate ourselves away from Christ. Yeah. As a matter of fact, what you'll find with more mess and distraction, Christ's name is less mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Christ's name is less mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Christ's name is less exalted and glorified. Yeah. And I think this is something that we have right. to keep in mind. Yeah. Keep in mind when we're saying that we're trying to do the work of Christ within Christ's church. And Paul saw this as an opportunity to, to, to pretty much voice it out and say, look, y'all create separations amongst yourselves. Yeah, yeah. When really the stuff y'all fighting about has nothing to do yeah. with, with with the edification of the gospel of Christ. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's tearing it down. Yeah. And matter of fact, it could also be swaying folks away. Yeah. So so yeah. when people people this this is when you're coming to a place like the church where you're seeking peace, where you're seeking tranquility, where you're seeking joy, and all that you find in the church is the same stuff that you find out in the world, why come to church? Yeah. That's the question. Why even come? That's why a lot of people quit coming all together. <laughs> Some people quit coming and say they ain't going back. I know my neighbor say he's not going back. I, I, I 
preach to him. He buy my books. But he said he ain't coming back to church. He said he ain't coming back to a church. Wow. I mean, I, I, I led him to salvation. I mean, in his, in his kitchen. I led him to salvation. And I talk to him all the time. We text. We talk. I go over to his house, preach to him. Seven verses of reading the Bible. I gave him a Bible. I gave him a study Bible. And um, I share the gospel with him all the time. But he just say he experienced such bad experiences in his old church. And he ain't coming back to a church. Hmm. Hmm. It, it, it's I think it's amazing again to see to see all this and kind of how it all plays out. Yeah. You know, from the perspective of our, our lives and, yeah. and even the life of the church. Yeah. And there are people, again, just like your friend, who feel that way. There are yeah. many more that feel that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. That feel that way. Yeah. And I think it's 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 an indictment, if you ask me, on the church. Yeah. That the church really needs to do some self examination right. about what about how we're receiving individuals and people. That's right. Bro. And what is the connotation of our heart and our very message? That's right. Is it line, aligned with Christ? Because if, right, if it's not, that's why you see the push away. That's why yeah. you see individuals saying there's no need for me to go over there. Yeah. No and yeah. so forth. When they yeah. feel they're going to be judged and not yeah. loved. The, yeah. Hey, man, that's, that's why I like this church right here because, man, I've been to so many churches. So much mess going on in churches, man. Like you said, cliques, ego, pride, arrogance, jealousy, lying, um, sin. All, just so much mess going on in churches. I mean, they, 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 the intention is not to live, but to save. The intention is not to get souls saved. The intention is to, the intention is to get more money, um, live in better homes, just that, look attractive, pride, ego. That's so much mess that turn people off, man. That turn people off, man. And you know, and I think this is why we have to keep again the oneness and community of Christ within yeah. within the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Understanding that, and when we're practicing ministry in that form, yeah. what it does is it keeps all the fluff distractions away. It keeps yeah. that stuff suppressed. So that it doesn't raise his head. It's like, you know, it's like taking the weed killer, if you will. You know, it's, it's taking weed. When you see a weed come up, you spray it. Yeah. Because, you know, if that weed grows, there are yeah. more weeds coming behind it. Yeah. And those weeds can easily overtake the lawn, yeah. you know, yeah. the grass, yeah. if, if you don't treat them. Yeah. So, so you've got to make sure that you're suppressing those things. And yeah. I believe that truly the weed killer, if you will, yeah. if I'm using that analogy, yeah. is Christ, is the love of Christ. Yeah. That everything we do is centered on that and that suppresses all the other distractions yeah. that could grow up, yeah. grow up and literally uh, literally choke oh, yeah. the health, yeah. choke the health of the church, yeah. the true health of the church. Yeah, funny, funny you mentioned that weed killer, man. You know what? Man, I was on the internet last night before I went to bed and I heard... That that preacher Jamal Bryant, man, he, that dude was something else, man. He's, he, I mean, you know, he's known for ludicrousness, but um, he was saying that the, the church needs to start selling weed in order to get the, <laughs> the man, the black man, to come back to church. That was so yeah, ridiculous. I, I, you heard about that? You're right. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you, uh, brother Dean. I literally, um, he's one of my, he's one of my Morehouse brothers. But one of the things that's tied into that when I saw it, yeah, it really disturbed me because I'm like. Okay, I'm like, so how are we going to promote, how are you going to promote that from the perspective of trying to save someone's soul? So, so, so to literally come to the church and someone who's already in that type of environment and you now introducing that from a church perspective yeah. to them. To, and basically in so many words, you're saying that, yeah, this is right. Well, because we can teach them business. My thing is, well, you can teach anybody business yeah. based on something else. He's not a preacher. That, that, not a preacher. That's the, that, I, it, 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 that that really disturbed me, man. And I'm 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 really kind of still analyzing this right now because yeah. Yeah. as I'm listening to, I'm like, nah, man, this this is not the path. You know, from that perspective, there's other ways to do it. Yeah. You know, from from that perspective, to bring folks into yeah. and evangelize to the church. Yeah. You know, to say yeah. that okay, we're growing, we're growing. Growing cannabis yeah. at the church. I'm oh like, my goodness. Oh I'm my like, gosh. okay. So what are we saying now? So now we're really completely aligning ourselves with the world when we say that, and then you try to put the blanket and the stamp of Christ on top of it to say, well, this is biblical. And this is no, it's not. No I'm way, like, no, way, no, it's no not. Way. And I'm like, at the end of the day, man, this that that that's something that kind of disturbed me. It really that's did. That's blasphemy, man. That's blasphemy, man. It it it's, it, it, it really really. Apostate. Yeah, yeah, uh, apostasy. Yeah, and so right. yeah, blasphemy, apostasy, hypocrisy, um, and the rest of and the rest of the word bad words. It, so, so this is where we have to look at things that are. This is this is when I talk about that difference between the sacred 
yeah. and, the, and the secular. Exactly. There's, exactly. There is a there is a distinct difference. Again, the the, the popular versus yeah. the peculiar. Same yeah. thing. That's right. Same That's right. thing. That's and right. and and this is where 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 we can't align ourselves with activity that yeah. we know is going to either lead to sin or sin in and of itself. That's right, and that's and that's why it's so important for us right, to really begin continuing to speak that out. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I heard, I heard the same thing you heard this week, and that and, and it really I can't even watch the rest of it. I turn it off. It, it, it just it, I'm sitting there. I'm like, did you did you just really this say that? This is where right now preaching people following this dude giving them money. At the end of the day, it's about Christ's word, and it's about it's a statute and a standard, and and I believe that is sending the wrong message. It is, it is sending it is. it is sending the wrong message it is. It when is. when that is is displayed and when that is outrightly spoken about yeah. from yeah. that from that perspective. Again, yeah. I don't know why Jamal said it. I, I don't know why Dr. Brian went through the process of saying that. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, that's a revisit. That yeah. that that needs to be revisited. Yeah. If we're gonna truly, if we're truly trying to be the light of the world and so forth, because and then you're saying, well, we're trying to reach the brothers who, who are on the corner smoking weed. I'm like, yeah. well, I'm sorry, you gotta hit them with something completely different than yeah. what they're doing, yeah. not the very thing they're doing, yeah. and say that you can still be uh be a Christian and we're gonna smoke this weed together. I'm like that 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 yeah. that that just that bothers me uh, yeah. on many fronts. Hey, but that's why that's why Matthew seven thirteen to fourteen say the way to heaven is brought the way to hell is broad and wide because the the, 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 the straight truth is, straight is the gate narrow is the straight, way yeah and few will find it and then I say the the, 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 the big the big churches I had these big televangelist churches most of them is apostate and backslidden and bankrupt because they they're preaching erroneous doctrine. It's like mo, 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 most churches that preach true doctrine, the, the whole all this Bible is small congregations. Mo, mo, you don't find too many. You don't find too many true churches that that's huge because the, the way the way to heaven is straight and narrow. I mean, people don't want to walk their way, man. People don't want to walk straight and narrow. They want to hear. They want to hear something. They want to hear a cotton candy message. They want to hear a cupcake message. They want to hear a wine message. Something tell them something that tell them they can do what they want to do. So they they go to that. That's why they go to the big churches because they tell them what they want to hear. That's where the money is in the big churches. But see, when you tell people the truth, what they don't want to hear, they won't come back. They won't come back. It, it's, it's again, it's one of those things that we have to be very, very careful about. You know, from that perspective. And again, I'm mean, using that using that example. Um, again, that we don't even create an environment where a few can happen. Where where, yeah. where 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 we could be arguing. Over something that biblically we know yeah. is not of God, and that, yeah. and that's and, and especially those who who are ministering that word, yeah. you know, and then to yeah. speak completely reverse or transverse of what that yeah. said or reverse yeah. of what that says. He's too, uh, he's it's, 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 that's, that's an example of being world, world, that's, he's worldly. And, and that's, that's, that's what the call being with that Bible. The Bible say, Philippians say, I say, I say this, I say this before, and I say it weeping. These are enemies of the cross. Who mind earthly things that, that if God is a belly, they mind worldly and earthly things. Hmm. The enemies of the cross. The enemies of the cross. Mm -hmm. So, so with that, I, I want to get into this, this keeping yeah, mind. It's going to tie in at what we're we talking about. I appreciate you bringing that up. No problem, bro. Uh, it says we. It says we are carefully joined together in Him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. That is Ephesians two and twenty one. That's uh, our keeping mind scripture. Again, we are fully okay. joined together in Him. Right. See that we are fully joined together in Him. Right, right. Becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Ephesians right. 2 and 21. Right. So again, uh, carefully joined. That's a carefully joined together. Exactly. So so there is, there is, it's not a rush. It's something that is, again, we're slowly into. So we want to make sure that we're getting this right. Yeah, precisely. That we're getting it, we're trying, that we're getting it right to the best of our ability of what God has told us to, to get. Yeah. He's a becoming a holy temple yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Let, let, let's get into some. I'm gonna get into some of this background here okay. uh, of some of the things that we're dealing with regards this this uh, the subject okay. and this lesson. Listen okay. to this. Uh, this this is a subheading in, in my in my commentary okay. uh, that says the temple. Okay. Says the temple at Jerusalem was made up of many courts. Uh, Paul focuses on the outer court, but there were four different different ones. The outer court was where the Gentiles had to stay. A lot of money exchanging or selling took place in the outer court. Next, there was the court of the Jewish women. The women could only go as far as this court. Next is the court of the Israelites where the Israelite men would go and offer sacrifices. The inner court is called the Holy of Holies. 
No one could go into that court except the high priest, except the high priest. Even he could go in only once a year. Before he could enter, he had to undergo a cleansing ritual. Uh, the Holy of Holies is the place where God dwells, separated from the rest of the temple by a curtain. The Gospels report that when Jesus was crucified, the curtain was torn. Circumcision, that's the subheading. It is the act of removing the foreskin of the male sex organ. In ancient Israel, this act was performed as a ritual on children, natives, servants, and outsiders on the eighth day uh, after birth. In the Jewish faith, it was an external symbol of one's total and complete allegiance and devotion to Yahweh. Controversy arose, excuse me, controversy arose in the early church over the circumcision of Gentile converts. During the AD first century, uh, Jews frowned upon, frowned upon um, non-circumcision amongst, amongst Christians. Apostle Paul played a crucial role in settling, this, settling the dispute. He determined that physical circumcision was not essential to Christian, Christian faith and fellowship. Circumcision of the heart through repentance and faith were the only requirements of the faith for non-Jewish Christians. Now here's our background. Many barriers divided Jews, the Jews and the Gentiles in the ancient world. Paul devotes much of his attention in this portion of the, of the letter to the essential oneness of the church. No Jews, for Jews and Gentiles alike, Paul explained that keeping law was not a requirement for salvation. Christ is the fulfillment of the law, making it complete. Salvation cannot be earned through strict adherence to the law or by works. Nevertheless, we are not absolved of our responsibility to do what is right. Salvation by grace through faith does not lead to good works. Thus, no one had the right to boast about personal goodness. There was no need for Jews and Gentiles to be divided based on Mosaic law. Christ became and remains the peace of all believers. Therefore, there is no need for division and discord. By lessening the significance of ethnic and cultural identity. Both Jews and Gentiles gain something far better and great. Now, let's get into the scripture. We're going to go ahead and read the text and, and get through the text and then go through back and, and explain and start having dialogue on the text. So Ephesians uh, 2, verses 11 through 22. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says this. It says, don't, uh, don't forget. Mm, forgive me, y'all. It's something in my eye. Says, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from the citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. Once you were once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from, from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. We, we brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near him. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and the cornerstone in Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, through him you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Now, let's get into these first kind of verses, Brother, Brother Roger. Uh, we'll start kind of with verses one, um, 11 through 13. And for those who are watching online, if you got comments and so forth, please put the comments down. I'll make sure to look up 
from time to time to see who is uh, putting comments in with regards to the lesson on this morning. So it says, don't forget, I'm going back to verse 11. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and, the, and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart, uh, apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did and you do not um, you did not know. One second. Ugh. Yes, come on in. And it says you did not know. And it's just saying, just leave y'all leave the door cracked. Okay. Just leave it cracked. Um, you did not know. Where was I? Let me go back to verse twelve. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from the citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. So what he's essentially doing, Paul is kind of setting up this whole status, if you will, of where the Gentiles were. Uh, at least for this church in Ephesus. He does it historically, okay? That Jesus ultimately came, of course, of course through the prophets in the Old Testament, we, we're getting the forecast in many different scenes of, of not only the prophets, but also of the kings, of the kings in every, uh, the, po the poetical books, uh, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament. We're getting that forecast of Christ coming, right. okay? We see it all through the Old Testament. And there's so, there's so many ways you see it. There's so many ways you see it that can be taught. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, Christ, of course, does come. Yeah. But he comes to who? He comes to the Jews first. Yeah. Now, this doesn't ostracize or, or try to separate a divorce to make to say that the Jews were, were, were special. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. That you know, we're a special nation because God chose us. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. It was because of God, God, God's infinite wisdom that he chose you all. That was his choice because he's God. Because yeah. God is God, he chose you all. Yeah. However, many of you all didn't receive him. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. He said, and even Jesus in Jesus' ministry, he oftentimes says, I came for the Jew first. Yeah. I came for the Jews. Yeah. You know? And so ultimately, when Jesus ultimately dies and is raised from the dead, we see in the ending of most of the gospels, and especially in the first chapter of Acts, yeah. what we see is Jesus speaking as he's ascending. Yeah. He says, I need for the, now that he's apostles, yeah. I need you to go throughout Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. Yeah. So now it's opened up yeah. because it couldn't open up until Christ did what he did at Calvary yeah. and until he was raised from the dead. That was the only way it was going to open up to the entire world. Right. So right. now since that has happened, Jesus makes it clear Okay, don't just go to the Jews. Yeah. You need to go to everybody. Yeah. Everybody needs to know this word. Yeah. Yeah. Why he even tells Peter, he says, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Yeah. So we see this mass appeal. Yeah. And what we find, time, find oftentimes, even historically and even in our current church, is that we feel we have so much favoritism yeah. or have so much uh, nepotism, that's the same word for, uh, for favoritism, yeah. towards the gospel. Yeah. Meaning that this thing has is, is always been about me and nobody else. No, yeah. no, no. This gospel is meant for everybody. That's right. And because of that, that means that anyone can be saved. Yeah. So this is why our doors are always open and our arms are even open wider yeah. in order to receive individuals and people with regards to the faith. Yeah. Now, what he's making clear is he's telling the Gentiles, he said, I want to kind of tell you of your state of affairs and how God made it clear to not push you away, but to yeah. bring you in too. Yeah. And yeah. so what he does is he says, look, I need you to understand that you all, yes, you all were outsiders from that perspective. Yeah. You know, but once Christ did what he had to do at Calvary in that empty tomb, yeah. he made a point to make sure that everyone was received. And that was the commandment that he gave to us yeah. is to go out and teach all nations, all nations. Yeah baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So now it doesn't become isolated to a group. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's now inclusive of anyone who wishes to receive that salvation. Yeah. And that's the state of affairs that Paul presents to the Gentiles in the Ephesus church, yeah. Yeah. in the church of Ephesus, because what he wants to do, he wants to make sure that they understand 
and that they know you are a part of this. Yeah, yeah. That God had you in mind yeah, yeah. in the midst of all this. Yeah. And because of that, there is a connection now that you have towards the citizenship of the church. Yeah. Citizenship of Christ. Yeah. Not because you, you are circumcised physically or, or not. Yeah. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. See that 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 was a that was a that was a Jewish tradition. That is a law yeah. that that was established within the Jewish tradition yeah. and said, "Well, no, no. If you're not circumcised, you can't be saved." Yeah. No, it's not circumcision of the body; it's circumcision of the heart. Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Have you been, have you been cut right? Right. Right. Ha has God done done proper surgery, yeah. spiritual surgery yeah. on your on your heart and on your being to truly experience? And be able to also give and forgive, yeah. <laughs> to give and forgive, and understand the the premise of why Christ even came. See, nobody has a monopoly on this. Yeah, it's it can be offered to anybody. Yeah, it's offered to every anyone. And anyone can accept it. Yeah. So this is where Paul begins the process of breaking this thing one. So he he's like, all of us are one in Christ. And Gentiles, I need to under, help you understand historically. Where God positioned all this and how he brought it all together. Because yeah. at the end of the day, Jesus Christ is the one that hoses it all in. Yeah. Christ is the one that connects it all. Yeah. That connects it all. And that's so important for the church because when anyone comes into these doors, yeah. they need to understand that you have a right to the tree of life too. Yeah. You have a right to it. Yeah. And if you wish to choose it, yeah. you can choose it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do choose it, make sure you're being responsible from the perspective of being in a place where you can grow, yeah. a place where you can be fed yeah. consistently, yeah. where you can truly work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. That's why I think it is so important for us to understand the connection of the church and not get into these hodgepodge groups and cliques and all the stuff right. that does not, that has no connection to the word of God and the intent of Christ for his church. That's right. It's, it's just, it's, it's really, it's really amazing from that perspective. Yeah. I'm going to read this. I'm going to take some comments after this, after I read this one from the commentator writer. He says this, Paul reminds his readers that before they were converted, they were Gentiles by birth and therefore considered outcasts by the Jews. The Jews despised them as indicated by the fact that they were called uns uncircumcised. The Jews regarded their circumcised state with snobbery. That's what they putting your nose up. Yeah. That's what they're lifting your nose up to people. Like, I'm better than them. Yeah. You know? And, and with snobbery. As this signified that they were God's chosen people. Yeah. They referred to themselves as the circumcision. Yeah. Paul corrects their sense of superiority by clearly stating that their circumcision was not was by human effort and therefore merely a physical act. What was really important, he told them, was the circumcision of the heart. While the Jews held on to a false sense of superiority about their status as the chosen, the Gentiles were without a savior altogether. The Messiah was promised to the Jews, even though Isaiah foretold, listen to this, foretold that the blessing would flow to all nations. Christ was sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's Matthew 15 and 24. The, um, the Gentiles were aliens from the, uh, from the commonwealth of Israel, Ephesians 2 and 12. They did not belong among God's chosen. They were strangers to his promise, considering all of God's covenants, uh, covenants had promised blessings to the Jews. For all, for all practical purposes, the Gentiles stood on the outside looking in without hope. But because of God's love, the former establishment was done away with. When the Gentiles receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God places them in Christ and accepts them through him. Jesus Christ has broken down the barriers that separate all people. What you got to say about that? <laughs> you know, I look at it this way. Man, when he operates on you, it's external. But when God operates on you, it's internal. So the difference is you can see what the man is doing. Mm -hmm. You feel what God is doing. Mm. Deacon Wiz, it, it, it's amazing how, and this is what me and Brother, Brother Roger were talking about just a minute ago, is that 
is that there are so many things. That there is a distinction between the sacred and the secular. There's a difference between what uh, something I wrote in a, in a blog, blog and uh, devotional. There's a difference between what's popular and what's peculiar. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference. And with that, I, I think what Paul is doing here, he's making sure that people don't stick their nose up. That the Jews don't stick their nose up saying that you think you're better than someone because uh, well, we're the chosen people. Well, why did God choose you? What was so special about you that God chose you? Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's what gets gets people a lot of times is that 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 adage of that makes people put their chest out. But at the end of the day, you got to truly humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Yeah. yeah. If you truly want to be exalted. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's, it's humility. Is you placing yourself in a low state? Yeah. In order to be, see, be seen in a higher state with God. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why Paul, I believe, is trying, he's, he's pushing it all down. Right. Because at the end of the day, all the snobbery, all the pride, all the arrogance, yeah. all that becomes what? Distractions. Right? Yeah. It becomes distractions to the church. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants to suppress all of this because he wants to see everyone look at themselves in a uniform way. Yeah. Also, it's going to dictate for some how they treat other people within the church. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a Gentile and, and someone else is a Jew who thinks of themselves more highly than they ought to think, yeah. what happens? Now, you, you, truth, you, you now have certain restrictions on how you love that individual. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not unconditional. When you have restrictions, those are conditions. Yeah. 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 And that's not unconditional love. Yeah. It is conditions placed to it. So that's not the way God is telling us to love. Yeah. He says love without condition. Right. Love unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's what God does for us. He loves us unconditionally. Go ahead, Brother Dean. See, um, see the Jews, man, the Jews act like they seem better than the Gentiles. <laughs> see, see, with, with, see a lot of people in modern day times I always be like this. People look at outside sins is, is is worse than inside sins. For example, people might people look at jealousy. People can't see jealousy to the reacts. But people look at jealousy and lying and pride and arrogance is better than cigarettes, alcohol, and other sins, like mm -hmm. fleshly sins. Mm -hmm. But it's no difference. And really, really the cigarettes and alcohol might be better than the lying and the jealousy because most people won't repent of that lying and jealousy. Some people, people that smoke cigarettes and alcohol, they be pleading with God. God, I don't want to do this. I'm sorry. I done did it. I'll pray, I'll pray, I'll pray with God. Please take this from me. But then other people I know, they be, be, they be written down with jealousy and lying and other sins. They think they sins better because they can't see their sins. But they call it, they call it, they say, I'm not saved because I'm smoking cigarettes. But I really was saved because I had a personal relationship with God. I was just struggling with something. So a person can have a problem and still be saved. But see, if you want to acknowledge your problem and repent, you ain't gonna be saved. You can't stay saved if you want you want repentance out of your problem. So, uh, so unseen sins ain't better than seen sins. You, you, you got to get all of them. All sin is bad. I don't care what it is. All sin is bad. It, it's it, it's amazing how even when you hear Paul when he writes to, writes to these churches um, in various places. So what, whether that is wrong, whether that's Romans, whether that's you know Philippians, Galate, the Church of Galatia, Church at Ephesus, Ephesians, that that. His, his the message that he sends is very consistent, right? And he makes it a point to tell folks that look, there's no matter of fact. We're, I'm doing a study in Romans right now for our seven o'clock Bible study. We right. just we just got into it, and we just finished that section that talked about um, actually where Paul goes in and he talks about um, folks who are worshiping the creation rather than the Creator. Right. And then what he does, he 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 talks about he talks about homosexuality. He goes right. into that. Right. Then he goes into other sins. Right. So what what he does is he doesn't stay on one sin long enough. Right. But most people when they read their passage like, yeah, all he's talking about is homosexuality. So I said, no, no, no. If you read this, he's yeah. talking about all types of sin. He yeah. uses homosexuality as one, yeah. but then he goes in and talks about all these other. Yeah. Talks about all this lascivious living and evil deeds, the things that uh, that bring about hatred and and greed and all the and slander and all these things. And so that's around verse 18 of chapter 1, chapter 1 of Romans. So when you when you go through and you read that, what ends up happening is 
Paul is trying to address the, the, the uh, what, what, what I call the depravity of man. Okay, it is literally how man has been deprived because of sin. Okay, and if you really think about it, in, in the midst of the church in Ephesus, he's doing kind of the same thing where he's telling church members, he's like, look, there is no separation between you all other than the aspect of nationality. And that alone should not separate you from the base level foundation of you being human and being the creation of God. So if you can lay down you being a Jew, if you can lay down you being a Gentile and realize that we're all created in the image of God, what you will find is that we got more similarities than differences. Yeah, exactly right. We got more similarities than differences. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm because I'm black or you you you, you being white, using for example, Deacon Williams, that there is there should be no separation. Between us, if we really truly see each other in the image of God that God wants to see us in. That's why I love some of the words of Howard Thurman. That's one of the reasons why I have him in that office over there um, on, on the wall. He says something He says something in, in, uh, in a book called Jesus and the Disinherited that has always gripped me. And what he said was, he says, when we're able to lay down our barriers, our organizations, the things that we say, quote unquote, have allegiance to, uh, when we lay down um, the aspect of certain devices like certain riches and money and so forth that may possibly we, that may possibly separate us or we cause to separate us, when we lay all that stuff down, what do we see? We see two. We'll see each other as both being poor, blind, and naked. Yeah. yeah. Being po poor, blind, and naked, and also realizing that guess what? We need each other. Yeah. yeah. And when you and when you get to that place in point. You'll begin to squash so much of the, the <coughs> racism, the sexism, yeah. all these, a lot of these isms in the world. Yeah. You'll begin to suppress those yeah. because you're not looking at race, you're not looking at sex, you're not looking <coughs> at all these other differences. But yeah. what you're looking at is the similarities of how God created you. And because of that, yeah. that becomes a connection now that now I can see you on a human level. Yeah. I can see Sister Fletcher on a human level now yeah. because now I've released those proclivities and those yeah. proclivities are not stopping me from loving you. Yeah. yeah. Are not going to stop me from giving to you. Yeah. They're not going to stop me. Oh, well, she don't belong in our clicking group. So we yeah. shouldn't give to No. Huh? See, that's not Christ. That's why, right. why is it that we face that in our church now? I, 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 I encountered that years ago. Why do we face, oh, well, you know, she doesn't have a degree, but she has to let her speak and introduce the speaker. Oh, she doesn't have the right clothes on, so let her go ahead and um, um, offer some of this or do this. Or let them stand and represent our church. Why is it that we don't see that? We don't understand what we're doing. Maybe they, they don't know they're doing it. <clears throat> Instead of saying we are all children of Christ, and we all come with a different idea and foundation with gifts. And that gift is to, to build up the kingdom of God. Not to build me up or build you up, but to build Jesus up, this kingdom. Sister Black, this, this is one of the things. I'm going to get to you, Brother Roger, here in a All second. Right. But All real right. quick, when, when you say that, when you speak that, as a pastor, I always, I always look at, I have to look at the total, try to look at the totality of all, of all the things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And the main objective is really to make sure we uplift. We mm -hmm. uplift everyone in the church, mm -hmm. wherever their stand is. If, if they decide that they want to go to trade school or they want to do this, to me, the church should have an avenue or be a support agent in be, being able to do that because I believe that is part of what the ministry of Christ wants us to do. Mm -hmm. right. Because we're going to truly say we're, gonna, we're, we're promoting life and life more abundantly, then we're going to promote those things that promote life and not death. Right. And not death. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of times, it's amazing how we, we can put... put certain degrees and all, all these other things. And I'm not saying this stuff is not, is not bad to have, but I, but I think at the, at the end of the day, we still want to promote uplift and uplift individuals, uplift individuals and give them opportunity. I'm going to be honest with you, where I am today was because of, of Sunday Home Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And Sunday Home Baptist Church would, would allow the youth, would allow us to do any, almost anything. Every, every, almost almost every other Sunday, we, we would give it. We were taking up collection, you know, we were taking up offering and, and tithes. Uh, they made us. They made us stand up front. They're they like, "Y'all two gonna do it today?" And they wouldn't even ask what y'all two doing it today. 
That's the building a foundation. Yeah, it's, it's building a foundation. And that's but why we, we go to children church or Sunday school and we reflect on what God's words say to build them up and to let them see your talent, what God's going to use you to do is so tremendous. It's going to blow your mind to look back over your life but you put God first. Your parents put God first to bring you to church. That is going to bring your education, your prosperity, <laughs> your future, your goals because everything's going to line up to go give God the glory. Uh -huh. Everything you do, whether it's school, uh -huh. swimming, activity, football, tech, or soccer, you're giving God the glory, whatever you're doing, to prepare you for greater works. For greater works. And, and, what, and what did Christ tell us? Great, told his disciples, greater works you will do. Mm -hmm. He told his disciples, greater, mm -hmm. he said, you think this is something, you're going to do greater stuff than this. Mm -hmm. And they, in their mind, trying to fathom, how can I... Doing anything greater than raising somebody from the dead and so forth. And what, he gonna, and what they didn't realize was that Christ is doing all this to show you you're going to raise folk from the dead before they even die. Ooh, oh yeah. You're going to raise folk from the dead before they even die. Because, what, because I'm going to give a, 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 a provision of my that's sacrifice. That's good. Provision of my mm -hmm. sacrifice that's going to allow them to have a choice to choose life. Yeah. To choose life. And once they choose it because you taught it and because you preached it, that's the greater work. That's the greater work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not because you're going to uh, put your hands on somebody and all of a sudden you know, they're healed from something. Yeah. No. The greater work is actually the, the, the cultivation and the movement of my word that will create the power. That yeah. power will be created and it will infuse every place you speak. Yeah. And when that happens, you're going to see stuff that was dead. Come alive again. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see it. Come out of a drug addiction state and come to a place of being of being uh of being drug free for 20 and 30 years and 40 years and beyond that. Yeah. I was like brother Dean and then Deacon Williams. Well, um going to what my sister was saying right here, um, she was saying well, how come um some people get promoted in the church and do certain certain um things before others because of I wouldn't say promoted. Um, I would just think overlooked. Overlooked. Well, Status what, quo. What it is is this. This is what I think. Um, it ain't. It ain't it's false doctrine. It ain't no more. It ain't enough correct teaching in the church. It ain't enough preachers preaching the total truth, because um, that's pride. That's pride. That's pride. That will let somebody. That was pride that will put somebody else above somebody else just because how they look or what they got. That's pride. But see, most most preachers don't. Most preachers don't preach on pride. Most preachers want to preach on other things. See, pride. Pride is so pride is a, a real devil because so many people so many people think about pride. Pride just says I'm better. Pride says I'm better. I look better. I got more. I deserve better. But nobody's better. Only I, we all come out of blood. I claim Jesus first. If you don't claim Jesus, you can't come. So I don't care what you got. I don't care what you don't got. If you got Jesus, you got everything. So it's too much false doctrine going on. I, these televangelists is preaching false doctrine. I'm telling you. You tell us, these televangelists, you see on TV, the first ones, the black ones, the white ones, all of them. I ain't gonna name a specific name, but they teaching false doctrine. They're not teaching the blood of Jesus Christ to answer all your problems. That's all. That's the answer to all your problems. The blood. In addition, you got in the lack you got Jesus Christ answered at the cross. Place your faith in the cross, you get it out your life. That's what got all my sins out of my life. Faith, faith in the cross on a consistent, exclusive, every second to second basis. And I'm saying it's receding from my life like a receding headline. I believe on that. I, That's right. Amen. I receive what you said. De no, Deacon Williams. You know, when I was coming up, we were taught never look over a person, look, don't look down at mm -hmm. a person, mm -hmm. look Amen. eye to eye. Amen. Once you do that, you create yourself equal. Yeah. Mm. Equal. So, when you go out, even though you might have more than others, just like they were talking about, the man talking about building an extra bond because he was getting more. Mm -hmm. When I get extra, I let it slide on somebody else. Yeah, yeah. In my circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I can't do it to everybody, mm -hmm. but there's always somebody near you that needs your help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, don't ever look above Nobody, and don't fear you're less than right. anybody else. Right, right. Just keep the love of God in your heart. That alone will keep you equal. Yeah, yeah. Just the love of God. The love of God from your food pantry fed 10 families from Chinese, Japanese, Colombian, 
Asian, Spanish, <laughs> yeah. and I give and them you, the Bible track. If I had any more, I had some old ones, and I let them know, you know, this is from First One Zion Baptist Church. This is from Jesus Christ. To let you know we're looking out for you. And I and Miss Williams, Miss Williams, always say, hey, get some boxes, take it out to whoever you know. And when I ask, they say, yes, yes. So that says that no matter what we have, <laughs> what little we have, or what lot we have. It's all for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. Our yeah. times will go back to the feeding of their 5,000. Yes. That Jesus did. Out, out of two fish and five five small pieces of bread. Mm -hmm. Out of that, out of that, a multitude was fed. Yeah. Now, all, most people just focus on the meal. Yeah. Like we oftentimes do. <laughs> we focus on the food. Yeah. The food. Did I get mine? Yeah. yeah. But the reality is, is that God says, if you take your little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you take the overflow that you got, guess what? You just give that out. Yeah. Because you never know how much more is going to come yeah. and how I'm going to make, make circumvent that in such a way where it's where what that, that little bit you thought that you had yeah. is going to go out to individuals that you didn't even touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you didn't you don't even know to touch. Yeah. Cause what you just said, Sister Fletcher, I'm like, okay, so you mean to tell me there's an overflow mm -hmm. in the overflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's an overflow in the overflow. Yeah. So now, with all the work that you all do, uh, uh, Deacon uh, Williams, Sister Ann, all what y'all do, it feeds over into other areas, yeah. into other places that we oftentimes, and even your, you yourselves, don't know where it's going to feed. Yeah. But at the same time, the whole notion is you're just hearing God says, go out, feed the folk. Feed the That's it. Just yeah. feed the folk. And once that happens, there's a residual impact. It continues over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. And I believe what Paul is trying to do is get these folks on one accord yeah. to say, look, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew. It doesn't matter if you're a Gentile. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're Asian. It doesn't matter if you're white. It doesn't matter if you're Hispanic. If we all can get on one accord, yeah. how much more can we do for the kingdom of God? Amen. When we're able to do that all in one accord, there is power there. Yes, There's yes. some serious power yes. that is inclusive there. And what ends up happening for us yes. is that we're able to project the gospel that much more because all of us said at the end of the day, we're not pointing at one or two individuals or a group mm -hmm. over here and a group over there. Uh, it's because in Christ, yeah. in Christ, yeah. for everything we do, yeah. in Christ. Yeah, in Christ, yeah. I don't get the glory. God gets the glory at the end of the day. And that right there is really where he's trying to build this church because he's, say, he's saying to them, if you get this one premise, the greater works that God wants to do through you, yeah. he'll do it. Because yeah. Yeah. there's a multiplication in your spirit yeah. that now has knocked the walls down and barriers down yeah. of any type of superficial or superfluous thing and, 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 try, and now has hosed it in in such a way that now everyone sees the worth that God created them in. Mm -hmm. And in the church, you all put that worth together to create greater. And that's where it, that's where it ultimately goes. That, go, that goes back to just being obedient to God's word because a lot of times God asks us to do things like maybe some people ask God to preach, some people ask God to teach, some people ask God to go minister on the streets, some people ask God to pass out food. So people ask God to um, get a ride. People ask God to do everything. People got different ministries. Nobody ministers the same all the time. But mm -hmm. a lot of times we say, God, I can't do this. I'm embarrassed. I forget the words. I can't do it. So I got, everybody got an excuse. Not everybody. Some of people got an excuse. But all you got to do is be obedient, and you'll see the overflow. You Once you get obedient, you'll see God move in so many ways. I used to, um, God, God, a long time ago, God asked me to preach. And I said, God, I can't do it. I don't have the money. What I'm supposed to do, I just, I, I, I didn't, I wouldn't do it. But the like, God kept pressing on me; He wouldn't let me go. So I finally said, "Yeah." So I, I, I then, then the internet came about. So I start preaching on the internet and going into the world everywhere I go. And so I see so many, I see souls saved, see people rededicating their life to God. So the overflow came in. So God just said, "Once you just be obedient, you'll see the overflow come in." You don't, don't worry about, don't worry about the prerequisites. Don't worry about, the, worry about being obedient and do what He say. And you'll see Him do taking effect in your life and in the world. To be obedient. I can't stress to you to be obedient. Don't don't tell God no. How can God bless you if you tell him no? A lot of people say they saved, but you tell God, no, I ain't gonna do what you want me to do. How can I let you in heaven you tell him no? 
Obey him. Listen to him and trust him. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. I'm reading this from here from the lesson. It says, as our peace, Christ has created a new people, free from the limitations of imposed human boundaries, such as culture, race, gender, education, Mm -hmm. social, or economic standing. All believers now have access to the presence of God at any time. This was in stark contrast to the Old Testament, when only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. The place where God dwell. And in this, this is where we all experience the presence of God through one Christ. What what is the Bible? I think it's in Hebrews. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One. 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 So so now it becomes a consistency that now, regardless if you got umpteen degrees or no degree, if if it's the matter of where God has placed you. In regards to ministry, there is a place in order that God's word can still go forward because God is calling folks to different aspects of ministry in order to effect change for the kingdom of God. And that is so important in this day in Christ. But at the end of the day, all of us, whether whether you the Episcopalians down the street, the Presbyterians on the corner, the Methodists around the corner, the AME and AME Zions all over the place, all the Baptists, yeah. All the Baptists that are all over the place, all over the place. Yeah. All of us on any given Sunday are still pointing to the same one Jesus. Yeah. And that and, and that and that's the hope. Hopefully. So we're all yet yeah, prayerfully. The, 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 tradi- the traditions that we have and things that at the end of the day, where is all this pointing? Is it pointing to you? Or is it pointing to Christ? Right. Is it pointing to Christ? Right. I, I, I'm gonna take a few more comments. I'm, I'm really, I'm really done. I'm done with the lesson well, today. I'm glad that we have the internet because yeah. when you pass the food out, so when you can't get to my church, when you can, but I'll tell them www first my God Baptist Church, and they'll say, I looked, I saw it last Sunday. So yeah. whenever, whenever God said, Prayer Virginia, you, it's about you. Just tell them. Yeah. When you give, tell, and then you pray about it, and you give me the glory. Yeah. And um, it just, it's just amazing. So now. I think I'm trying to bring some of the children to church. I asked them, can I bring your children to church? You know, And they said, okay. So I'm trying to bring some children to church for Sunday school. So that that in itself, guys, it's something you got to get out of self, too. Mm-hmm. Stop, stop being so shy and think, oh, well, they, they might yeah. not come. Well, they come or not. You step out on favor and act, yeah. and I'll do the rest. Exactly. Uh-huh. Last Sunday, we started something here. Might attract thousands and thousands of people would put the bulletin on the screen. Mm-hmm. Everybody can see what's going on here first. Like, wow. <laughs> and it's just like the pyramid. Everything is pointing to the internet. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going down to the people. People. Yeah. It's, going, it's going down to the people. It's going down to the people. Yeah. So this is something that man created really didn't know what he was really doing. We really doing. And see, and this, and this tells you the wisdom and the power of God. That even when when that those ideas and so forth were dropped to create all this stuff, the social media and so forth. Yeah, there are evil spirits that are trying to use that are trying to use it for evil. But we see but when the pandemic hit, when the pandemic hit, it was a complete shift. And I honest and I honestly and truly believe that one of those shifts was that y'all are going to use this technology in order for the gospel to go forward. Yeah. Now, there is no excuse at this point because everybody got a cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody got a cell phone. Yeah. And you can go on, on your social media screen and you're going to see a service. Yeah. At least one. Yeah. At least one is going to post up. Yeah. And you're going to see see that. So the word is going forward. I don't know who this is going to reach. Yeah. Even I know it's live. We only got one person on the We were up to about five. Yeah. But this is recorded, so it's going to be on the wave. Yeah. It's on the internet now. Yeah. So, so after after we finish, it'll be there. Yeah. So you never know who's going to come and go to our YouTube page and say, yeah. "Let me look at this," and just, and just study for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah. That is the beauty of where we are now. Every church, every church is a mega church yeah. if they really think about it. Yeah. But more important, not even in the title. What I mean is, is that if we are do, truly doing this for Jesus Christ, our ministry is global yeah. because of this stuff, right. because yeah. of all the technology. Right. Ministry is global. Yeah. It's global. Even yeah. from First Mount Zion, right here on the corner of Western yeah. Remount, yeah. 
our ministry is global. Yeah. So with that, even if we can't reach everybody and get and be able to touch folk, yeah. we know that that word of preaching and teaching is going out. Yeah. Personally, I think, um, of course, I noticed that God created the internet. I mean, man didn't create the internet. Man didn't create nothing. God dropped the idea. <laughs> now, now, God, now, 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 the devil always got an infiltration for what God created. Like, um, God created everything, but God got the devil try to infiltrate everything. God do. God try to trap everything. God do. So God, um, God created the internet. God created the internet so the gospel can get to the world. But then the devil want to use it for secular music, pornography, and all the rest of that crap. Mm-hmm. Now I want to tell y'all something before y'all leave. I got a special gift for everybody. It ain't much, but just a special gift. Maybe you can give one to your grandchild or your child. And I think it'll bless them. Um, and um, you can keep one for yourself. Um, I got more than one. I, I try to give everybody two. And, um, <laughs> it just, I think it'll bless your life. It just bless you. Get one. Some some people you know might give more than two. But um, just a positive. I got positive. Excuse me. I'm positive. Holy, I got going on. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Mm-hmm. I gotta go through All right. No, thank you, brother Roger. We definitely have to go go through. Definitely go through this. Right. All right. right. So, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm I'm done, y'all. I'm done. I'm done teaching for the day. Uh, we're going right in the service. Uh, again, I pray that you got something from the lesson. Those online, you got something from the lesson on today. Amen. It is really about one in Jesus. That's really what it's that's about. It. That's really what it's about. And mm-hmm. that's why I think it's so pertinent for us to understand that as we're in this season that we're in, you know, in the holiday season we're in, but also from the perspective of just the church to know why we're doing what we're doing and not to cause any frictions or separations right. within the church. That right. we're all coming together as one, worshiping right. the same Lord, right. one faith, one, uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism right. from that perspective. So I have a word of prayer and then let you all get out to serve and go back to the, uh, to the study and get myself together so I can come out for worship as well. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this lesson of today. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for just the energy that uh, was in it, oh God, and um, and all of the contributions from those here in uh, that are right here in the classroom, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for uh, just bringing your word forward and letting us know, Lord, there is one. we're all one in Christ, one yes. in Jesus. And so we ask right now before we leave this place, but not from your presence, is give us mercies as we're going to worship on this morning and allow us, Lord, to see your glory as we move forward. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.